Hello, welcome to Community Pulse. I'm Melinda Patterson, and we have a program for you that is very unique, very special. As you know, we've had doctors here before to talk to us about health, people health. Today we have a specialist, a veterinarian, a doctor, who takes care of doggies and cats. So I would like to introduce to you um, Dr. Tracy Dupree. Thank you for being here. And you are a veterinarian. Yes, yes. I am. How long have you been a veterinarian? I've been a veterinarian for 13 years. Uh -huh. um, I graduated from UC Davis. And um, I've practiced in three different hospitals, and I currently own Valley Animal Hospital in Bloomington. Great. That's wonderful. Uh, I actually met you at a function that the city of Rialto had, and um, it was very interesting. You had a lot of information, a lot of good information. Now, your location is in Bloomington, you said? Or? Yes, Bloomington. Yeah. We're at 993 West Valley Boulevard in Bloomington, oh. in the Mission Plaza Shopping Center. Oh, very good, very good. Now, let's talk about doggies and cats. Now, do they need to have immunizations? Let's say I adopt a new little doggy, and he's about three months old. Do, is there going to be some requirements or some needs of shots that he will need? Absolutely. It is very important in this area that every dog be vaccinated for parvovirus. That is the number one thing that we really are concerned about with uh -huh. puppies becoming vaccinated for. Um, also distemper virus, so that's a combination shot that they would get. Okay. And they would get one every three weeks until they're over four months of age. At or after four months, that is considered protective. And then they would get a booster a year later on that one. Okay. Um, other vaccines that are also important that we do routinely are rabies vaccinations starting at four months of age and then a year later boostering that and also the Bordetella vaccine, which is for kennel cough. That's an infectious cough that dogs can transmit through the air to each other. Oh, is that right? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so I have to get on it with my little dog. <laughs> I right? would say so, yes. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Now, um, is it easy to train an animal? Is, is, is it really, um, can it be diffi difficult? Well, it does take diligence to uh -huh. train a dog to um, do basic things, but I find that dogs, they want to please us. Okay. And also they are responsive to things like food many mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. as a reward. And they are happy when we're happy. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think that it's easy to train them, but it does take diligence and you wanna make sure you don't confuse them by having different people in the household doing different things. Mm -hmm. So it's good to involve the entire family in the dog's training. The easiest things to do in the beginning are to teach your puppy to sit and to lay down, do things that they naturally would do anyway. But when they do what you want, you give them a reward. And I do think that it is very good to take young puppies to puppy classes. Mm -hmm. You know, usually at or before four months of age, providing that they're vaccinated and that it's a safe environment, that the, the trainer is making mm -hmm. sure everybody's vaccinated. I think that's a good way to start off things right because they give a lot of great information. Oh, great. Now, where are, do you know of any uh, training classes? Um, oftentimes, um, public parks and rec do oh, okay. classes uh -huh. as well as um, large pet store chains like Petco and PetSmart and private trainers. I, you can easily do an internet search and find somebody right. and or word of mouth as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a cat. Let's mm -hmm. say, let's go to a cat. If I did get a cat at three months old, mm -hmm. are there injections that that little kitty will need to? Yes, absolutely. You know, we do have a lot of problems in this area with <coughs> upper respiratory viruses as well as feline leukemia virus. Um, so these are things that we do need to vaccinate against. Mm -hmm. um, all kittens do receive a four-in-one vaccine of their own, which mm -hmm. is more for upper respiratory viruses and an intestinal virus as well. Um, they do need that every three weeks until they're four months of age. We also recommend that all kittens and if, even adult cats, if they've never been tested before, have a test for feline leukemia virus. That is a virus that if they catch it, there's no real treatment for it. Mm -hmm. It does cause inflammatory diseases and cancer in the pets if left, you know, if they catch it. 
Um, so we do prevent it with vaccination. And they need two vaccines for that three weeks apart. You know, if they've never had it before, it has to be at least 10 weeks of age to start that series. Okay, if someone has questions, they can always call your office. Absolutely, absolutely. That's great. And the phone number? It's 909-877-2384. Very good. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, before we started, I had a little chihuahua that was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And one day she just uh, had a seizure. And she, was, she seemed to be healthy. She had all her shots. We had her checked yearly. But we took her to the doctor, a veterinarian, and she had cancer mm -hmm. for completely, he said, through her whole body. Was there something I could have been looking for to possibly prevent it? Well, it, it depends on what kind of signs she was showing. And mm -hmm. sometimes dogs, they hide things very well. And we don't know until it's too late that there really is something wrong. But there are things to watch for, especially as pets age. And I do think it's very important that any pet over the age of seven be seen by the doctor twice a year, just for routine exam mm -hmm. and also for vaccines if necessary. But mainly what we're looking for is any signs of heart disease, you know, dental disease, any masses, tumors mm -hmm. that aren't supposed to be there. We can check those things and possibly find something early also, blood work is not a bad idea. You know, when mm -hmm. they're over seven, it's not something I insist upon, but I do recommend it for mm -hmm. a senior pet that they have blood work once a year where we can check for subtle changes that aren't showing up yet. And also, signs that you can watch for at home, you know, in between those visits, if your pet starts to eat less, you know, than they normally would, or they seem like they're dropping weight, your vet should have a record of what their weight has been. Mm -hmm. They can, you can always bring them in and have them weighed and see if they are losing weight. That is a big sign that there's mm -hmm. something wrong. Also increases in water consumption. That's something that you know, a lot of people will say, you know, maybe he's drinking more water. That can be a sign of something wrong, mm -hmm. you know, such as diabetes or kidney disease. So subtle things like that should be watched for. And of course, big things like lameness, vomiting, diarrhea, right. anything that's noticeable, you probably should take the pet in. Okay, so they can be treated if they should develop, let's say, diabetes. Oh yes, absolutely. Diabetes is very treatable in the same way that it is in people with insulin injections. So if, if a pup, a doggy, let's say a more mature doggy, mm -hmm. develops um, diabetes, uh, Will the treatment be similar to an adult's a human beings? It's a little bit different. Um, people usually get either type 2 or type 1 diabetes, but um, type 2 is more of a nutritional issue with people, and I'm not a human doctor, so right, I'm not going to comment right. on that. But for animals, it's always insulin dependent, mm -hmm. so we always have to treat them with insulin injections. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, they're fairly easily managed. Mm -hmm. What is a normal, uh, let's say, lifespan of a dog? It varies a lot. You know, for your really large breeds like um, Great Danes, Mastiffs, and those type, mm -hmm. it's a lot lower. You know, it's between seven and ten usually. Um, but for your really tiny dogs like your Chihuahuas and your Yorkies, I've seen some 18 to 20 years old. Mm. So there's a pretty big variation, and usually it's dependent on the size of the breed. Okay, it seems like you enjoy your work. I do, absolutely. Yeah. I love being a doctor. It's an interesting job. You come to work every day and there's something different, and it's very rewarding because I do love my clients and my patients. And you have regular clients, I'm sure. Yes, you know, we've been in business, the practice has been here for over 50 years. Yes. And we have multi-generational clients, you know, where their grandparents uh -huh. came to us a long time ago. So, Is there something you would like to uh, let our viewers know about taking care of their pet? Something specific, mm -hmm. like maybe in the summertime they need to keep them in the cool or make sure they have water? Or yeah. Do we have deaths because they don't get taken care of? Yes, we can have heat stroke in the summer. Mm -hmm. I do see a lot less of that than I used to. I think people are fairly well informed about things they need to do to mm -hmm. protect their pets during the hot weather. But the main thing is make sure they have shade, make sure they have plenty of water, and 
um, breezing is good is important like to have a breeze right. so you know that's why pets die in hot cars they don't have any air flowing over them oh, and it yes. gets so hot so quickly so never leave your pet in the car when it's hot outside right. and we hear even so with much. the windows rolled down right. it's we hear not so much that that happens yeah. people forget they think they're all going in there for five minutes mm -hmm. and they're gone an hour yeah, and I have seen a couple of tragedies happen from that. But I think in general, people are much better informed about that. And people love their pets like members of the family, and you know, they educate themselves. That's great, that's great. Now, is table food okay for a dog and cat, or should they stick to the regular pet food? What is your opinion? Well, the thing about pet food is that it's kind of pre-balanced for them. You know, we have to take vitamins because we usually make poor choices. <laughs> right. Dogs, they have their food pre-made in the right amounts of vitamins and minerals. And I do think that it's best for them to have no more than 10% of their calories come from other sources. So if you do give them little bits of table food, that's okay, but you just wanna make sure it's very small amounts. And there's certain things that could be harmful to the pet. Chocolate, for sure, everybody yes. knows that. But yes. there are some things that people don't necessarily know. Um, grapes and raisins can potentially cause kidney disease in some oh, dogs, my. so we do not recommend that ever. Um, onions also can be very toxic to dogs. Wow. Um, macadamia nuts <coughs> also, and avocados sometimes can cause diarrhea. So oh, really? You know, there's certain things that we just don't ever give. But if you give them little pieces of lean meat, that's okay. Um, I also recommend not giving them anything high fat, like a piece of cheese or something right. is, is probably not good unless you need to do it to give them a pill or something right. like that. Wow, that's good to know. Thank you so much for sharing that information. We are so happy that you're here for us. So if we need to take our pet, uh, we will take him there. Great. You're doing a great job for the city of Rialto. We thank you for that. Well, thank you. So would you like to leave uh, a thought with our viewers before we close? Sure. You know, I'm, I love being a veterinarian because I love how much people love their pets. Uh -huh. You know, and I love being a part of that for them from the time the pet is very young until they're very old. And I really do enjoy my work and I enjoy being in this community. Wonderful. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you. I will give the number out again. And it's 909-877-2384. Correct? Yes. And you're located at 993 West Valley Boulevard? Yes. And it's unit number 120 mm -hmm. in Bloomington? Yes. Correct. correct. All right. That's Valley Animal Hospital. Thank you, Dr. Dupree, for being here with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, Community Pulse, I told you we were going to have a good discussion. So hopefully the information the doctor gave us today will help you with your pet. Remember, they're part of the family, too. Until next time, I'm Rolinda Patterson, and this is your TV show, Community Pulse. Thank you.